All right, so another day, another adventure. Uh, this is going to be today's project. You wondered where we kept all our finished goods for the antique store? So it's all gonna go from here into the van to the new house. So here we go, first load. It's awkward because it's all loose pieces. The rest of it I should be able to pack tighter because it'll be in boxes. But still made a pretty good dent. So yes, Chris has started unpacking this. This is where he is. Oh, I'm not looking forward. But I, you know, the nice thing about the new house is we'll be able to access both sides of these shelves utilize instead of it getting pushed back and we don't we can't get to it so and then we'll be having a huge sale for things that have just sat or we just kept yes we just need to you know you always need to summer seems to be the time that we assess our inventory and figure out what we're going to keep and what we're going to just you know sell <laughs> To take this thing apart and that is going to the new house and we'll have almost half of it done if you all are wondering where the heck is Yvonne why is she not helping Chris well this is why <laughs> we are actually moving the attic items also my son Alex came over because most of the stuff is his so he did not film he came over and he got a lot of his stuff went through his stuff, what he was going to take to Goodwill, what he was going to still be reselling, what he was going to take to his new apartment. But yeah, we wanted to get this space cleared out also. So yes, why Chris was doing that, that was what I was doing. Oh my goodness. So Alex got his stuff cleared out. Then my daughter Zoe came over and she started, because you don't want to get rid of whatever they want to keep. You know, we don't mind storing stuff in totes, you know, wrap it, what have you. But yeah, it was a lot of trips up and down the steps. But of course, you know, the hairdresser mom, let's touch up your roots. <laughs> She's been wanting her hair done um, to become that natural blonde again. Why we are... <laughs> Oh my gosh, carrying stuff down. Yeah, you know, we are just multitaskers in this family, but look at those beautiful blonde roots. While Chris was taking his truckloads, I was taking my truckloads. And really, we might have a tote of each of the kids' memorabilia from being a baby and their high school and trophies and stuff like that. But this is my load. This is my from birth to they graduate high school scrapbooks photos holy cow it filled up my whole expedition and out of chris's five loads this he's taking over this is his last load for the day which is all the windows and frames and yes i'll claim it i'll raise my hand yep it's all all it's all me it's all me yes now this is all our inventory that was stuck in the shed part um, now that we have that here, we can go through it. He's putting the shelves together. It'll be so nice to be able to access both sides of the shelving. Oh my goodness. But yes, still some things have to go in the basement. Some things that go into the office. But the main thing was to get our 
massive inventory moved go through the inventory to see if I do have a sale or if I just take it to auction because a sale, you know, y'all know that having a sale at your house is just a buttload of work. And that's all I have to say is sometimes it's just too much work. All right, so we got everything moved over except for a hutch and Yvonne has special plans for that. So you'll have to stay tuned. It's an antique one that she wanted to put into a house if we ever built for a bar area for a coffee bar or something like that. And it has these two side pieces also. But like I said, you'll have to stay tuned and see what she does with that. So everything is out. Hi guys, yes, it is a busy weekend. Actually, every weekend that we have it seems to be busy here lately with, you know, with selling our house, buying a new house, you know, but you still have to run a business. So we, I still have to DIY, I still have to craft, but I also still need to source. So sourcing means I need to purchase items to make over, resell, you know, it's just a continual cycle. So going to auction on a weekend and then, you know, just doing what we need to do to get done, basically. So why Chris is unloading more stuff out of our workshop and bringing it over here to the new house, I need to pull inventory because all our inventory now is at the new house to restock our booths. So if you did not know, we have three booths at our one of our local antique malls. So I need to pull stock. The nice thing about where we're at is that daily they email you with what you sold. So you have an idea without having to go in and look at your booth, what you sold. So we know. And then there's a couple furniture pieces that I just recently did that I want to get into the booths. There's a couple older pieces that haven't sold and they weren't ones that I painted and made over anyway. So we'll take those out. I'll bring the new ones in. You know, it's just nice. You, one thing about having a booth or having multiple booths or reselling is constantly refreshing. It's, and that's the hard thing. It's You constantly have to get fresh, refresh it, move things around, get things in people's view, eye level. You know, you could have an item on a bottom shelf and sits there for months and you can move it to the top shelf and the next thing you know, that day it sold because you moved it to the top shelf. So rotating your stock, you know, just, just freshening it up and making sure that, you know, it, your booth is not a mess when you go in there. So, yep, I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to show you some of the things I'm going to pull. Um, some of the items may not be priced, so I'm going to have to price them because it, it kind of, our inventory was getting so out of control um, the way that we had our shelving system. I haven't put it over to the shelving system yet because I want to go through it slowly because I want to think, okay, do I think this? there's still a market for this? Do I need to send it to auction? Do I need to have a garage sale here at the house, which I really don't want to have to do because there's so much work. Oh my gosh, so much prep to a garage sale. For those of you who have ever had one, you know what I'm talking about. So let me flip the camera around and start picking out some of the items I know that we are in need of. So I know that I need to grab one of these dough bowls. Um, so I think I'm gonna grab the smaller one. And I priced it high because they are old, y'all. And I know I've seen them like 200-ish. So I priced it at 120 and it sold within a week. So I think that's a pretty good ratio. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one. Now this one's a little bit different. It's got the big crack, but it's got the metal on it. So I may still price this one at the same price. So I'm gonna bring that one over to sit it on the shelf for right now. So I know that one needs price. So now, oh, yeah, it, it's a little, it is, yes, y'all. It's a, it's really overwhelming. Oh, very overwhelming sometimes. So I just have to kind of dig in and see, <laughs> and see, oh, some items might be items that needed to be made over. I know I need, always need smalls. Smalls are always a good seller, y'all. Um, oh, Oh, I do know that I need some watering cans with the spout. 
sell, of course, you know, y'all, they sell better. So I know I need, <sighs> that's an older looking one. So we'll grab that one. Um, I think this is all of my bigger items. Oh, so many decisions I want to grab. I think I'll grab this. Um, this is one of them that I redid. Um, but now my other booth is Rusty Krusty when I close the outdoor booth. So I'm going to go ahead and... Because people are still doing decorating their outside. My outdoor booth is doing really well. It's... I call it an outdoor booth. Well, I call it an outdoor booth, but it's indoors. So... Um, we closed our outdoor booth that I had. It just was too inconvenient to go to another antique mall. It's just easier to be right where I'm at. And so we'll, our second booth that we had gotten, I kind of transferred it over into like outdoor stuff because I love Rusty Krusty's. I love galvanized. I, I love it all. So luckily people have been liking it. <laughs> you know, my stars that I redo, the fence pieces that I've redone, um, you know, your little critters that you set outside, your little cement, terracotta pots, what have you. So that would be a perfect piece to go in there. But I have to think about what's, how, what my room is, how much, how much size or what I can fit into that space. I have milk cans right now. Um, I may, I may give this guy a try. He needs, he needs cleaned. Um, I have not sold him yet. He is huge, y'all. Look at that. But he is just a gorgeous piece. So we'll go ahead, and I think I'll do one of these. I don't have any of these metal trays left, so I'll do that. Carry this over first. I think this one has a price tag on it, but it needs, <laughs> even in, you know, your inventory, it still needs to be wiped off. I'll get that so other. So we've had a few, even though I make old boxes over, we've had a few of these boxes sell lately. So I think I'll bring another one of those into our antique booth. That's where that one, those have been selling. We just recently sold two of these. You know, I, you know, I have done vignettes in these um, little displays, but I'll go ahead and see if it sells. And if it sits too long, I can always bring it home and do a display for you all. Or I just go out at auctions and sales looking for them to be able to make over but so i'll get that taken I have to down. figure out how to get back to that box because my salvage pieces have been selling so i'll have to <laughs> move some move some stuff around to get back to that box So now I'm doing some prices. This is just out of a recent haul. Um, not even sure if you saw it yet. This cute little mushroom ceramic ladle and spoon. So to figure out my pricing, I get asked that a ton. I'll snap a picture on eBay and then see what comes up. And then I'll copy and paste the wording into the search engine and then go to sold filters to see what's comparable comparable so a set like this actually was selling for sixty dollars has sold for sixty dollars a three set with the fork sold for 69.99 mine has some a little bit of imperfections there's some chippage chippage right here um, so I won't sell mine quite as high. So I put a $39 price tag on the two of these and I'll sell these as a set. So I have these cute little turtles. They're little, um, cement turtles for your outdoor. I paid, um, $5 a piece for them. So I will probably ask $14 for individually for these. I'll double check quickly on eBay. Um, there is some imperfections. I mean, chippy paint's one thing, but to be chipped, a, a little, you know, something else. So, but I'll double check on eBay, make sure that I'm not underpricing myself because even cement items like this, 
that are yard decor are available to look up on eBay also. So this is one of our booths that I, like I was talking about. So this is what I consider like my outdoor-ish booth, um, even though, yeah, some of it's not 100%. But yes, eh, this is after I stocked. I forgot to take a before picture, and then I look at the top there. I could probably still fit something in there. And with our move, we have this packed. And you all, you know, people will say to me, you know, I've done this, I've done that, and it hasn't sold. Hey, y'all, it happens to me too. This dresser that I made over, I we put a new top on it. We still cannot get this piece to sell. So since we chose to have three booths, we can um, separate our stuff out. So we have, I have the outdoor-ish type of booth. Now this one is on the antique side of the mall, the antique mall. And so this needs to be vintage or antique. But you will see a couple of our refinished pieces, our painted pieces in there because of doing the primitive look, repairing things, making things look old, I can put a few of the items in this side of the mall, but then I always ask the owner, be, I want her to have the opinion. Um, I don't want to be that crafter trying to you know, sneak my craft items over into the antique side, like the primitive desk that I did, that little cabinet that we did, the horse that I refinished. They all look like authentic primitive pieces. If I pop back over to our outdoor booth, that's what I mean. So this has more of the out rusty crusty, and then I can change this booth out for seasonal. So like when it becomes Christmas time, I can, you know, you're not buying the outdoor stuff as much. I can change this into more Christmas. And um, I did just take these rocking chairs that I've had for 20 plus years from the Cracker Barrel off our front porch because I no longer have a front porch and put a price tag on those and that I didn't have to take up so much room waiting for a garage sale. But yeah, I do really think that it helps our sales a little bit better that you can really focus in on antiques. You can focus in on... um the outdoor items but then we can also flip to our first booth which is more crafted or newer pieces yeah it has antiques in it but it still it still has what i consider my craft items i thought i would just share our thought process of how we separated our booths out why we separated our booth out um will we keep three yes um, we're actually trying to get one more in the antique side across from the other, the antique booth that we have now. So we'll see how that goes. So I forgot to do a closing at the new house. But anyway, so yes, I thought we would share a little bit more of us moving inventory. No, we did not hire anybody. We have been doing it little by little ourselves. Luckily, it's only a 20 minute drive to the new house. Oh my goodness, but I do, I feel like that, how do we all do it? How do you take a house that you have everything organized and then you put it into boxes and you carry it into a new house and the next thing you know, you walk in, there was one day I walked in and I looked at Chris and I'm like, oh my gosh, we are an episode of hoarders. Oh my goodness, I just feel like a hoarder. Um... <laughs> Uh, and I know I need to go through that inventory. I know that we've gathered it all out. It all fit in that part of the workshop shed part. Um, yes, but I, you know, do y'all get overwhelmed like that? I am not, you know, I'm probably a weird reseller because clutter, I can't do clutter. Clutter just causes me anxiety. So, um, yeah, so our booths are really stocked right now. Um, so y'all, yes. Yeah. So I, and I hope I shared a little bit of the behind the scenes. Yeah, I have clutter too, y'all. I've got stuff. I've got a packed inventory. I have pieces that didn't, haven't sold no matter what I do to them. And then I ended up that hutch that we had painted, put this beautiful inlay on. We brought it home, put a new top on it. And then I ended up half pricing it to see if, I mean, that's a big piece to have to bring home and it not to sell. It's just, yeah, furniture is really hard right now anyway. You know, maybe you guys are all lucky out there that flip furniture and sell it automatically. But I, I that's 
not like it used to be um, when I started this journey. But I'll always have pieces in there. Um, I'm trying to keep them to the smaller size so they don't take up so much room. That way I can actually put a smaller price tag on them too. So when you have the big pieces, you have the bigger price tag. But anyway, and I hope that I shared a little of the behind the scenes of my thought process of why, you know, the antiques, the outdoor, which could then be seasonal, and then the craft. You know, that way I'm able to draw different crowds into because I can tell you in our craft booth, our antiques didn't really sell. Very seldom did the antique sell. So because the, the boot are the antique mall that we are in is separated by antiques and crafts. So even though there's not a lot of crafters anymore in that side of the mall, um, there's some people that have gone there for years and never stepped foot into the other side of the craft mall. So being able to get an antique booth was huge because we have always loved antiques. And I will always double check that, like, okay, that dresser, that uh, that desk that I made over this cabinet that I did, that rocking horse that I did, you know, I don't want to step on anybody's toes that is a crafter and like, hey, why does she? But my pieces are a little bit different because of the way that I finish them and that I try to make them look authentic, be primitive pieces. So there's that, y'all. So anyway, I just, I like to be honest with everybody that, Anyway, so there's the story of behind the scenes. We'll have more footage of us moving. Sooner or later, we'll be in the house and I will be decorating. But for right now, we're just keep boxes upon boxes and you'll see more hoarders episodes to come. So thanks again for all you have that have taken the time to subscribe to our channel. You know, that means a lot because not that YouTube pays you like per subscriber rate. What happens with your subscriber rate is that the more subscribers you have, the better the businesses that want to place commercial ads on your page is. So the more subscribers you have, the better the ads, the better they'll pay to put those ads. So y'all, so please, if you can, and you are able to subscribe to our channel, we would really appreciate it. Remember, we started this channel to try to get Chris to come home at least part-time and be able to do this journey with me because we'd be able to go to, through boxes a lot faster. So thanks again for watching. And I love you all. Thank you for supporting, supporting us and what we love to do. We'll see you next time and you can see what we're up to. Bye.